Hello everyone, welcome back to another calculus video and this time I'll be teaching you guys the basics of how to find the instantaneous rate of change. So this um, has to be prefaced with like uh, a bit of review about how to find the average rate of change. So let's say we have a coordinate plane. Let's just have the uh, x-axis this time. We don't need the y-axis really. So we have something here, a line, and you want to find the rate of change from this point to that point. So let's call this point A and let's call this point B because we're not very I'm not very original. So A and B, you want to find the average rate of change or a slope. So basically it's the slope of this line and let's do that in a different color actually maybe orange so draw a line here to there all right so let's call this line i'm gonna write in orange again let's call it line l so we're gonna find this this line slope and how we do that is Let's write this out, m of l equals the y value of b minus the y value of a over the x value of b minus the x value of a. So this is the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, the same thing as that. So why is this important? Well. This video is about the instantaneous rate of change, so we're going to try to find the slope of a line at basically one point and one point only. So let's say like this point right here. What's the slope um, on this line from A to B? So it would look something like that, maybe, maybe like that. So this would be a tangent line, so it has the same slope as this AB line. Not, not line L like this curved line. So how we would do that is basically if you imagine line L and you keep drawing it shorter and shorter. So like from here to there. Or, or let's say um, maybe just let's continue this line A. So you would like to find the slope of this red line move it down but the only way you can do that is by continually shortening the distance let's say from a to here from here to there then you'd have to go even shorter from here to there and then a to some point that's infinitely close so eventually let's zoom in a bit on this entire image so we'd have like hmm, this going to be difficult. So let's say you have A right here and then you're going to have some point infinitely close. This is not a good visual representation. Let's call it A plus H. So these are the the X values and let's call this line F and these are the X values and then the Y values would be F of A and F of X Oh, not next. All right, a plus h. So this would be corresponding to that, and this would be to that. So eventually, as they get infinitely close, also meaning that h is getting infinitely close to zero because they're getting really close to each other, then we would have the exact slope of that red line I was talking about earlier. Oops. All right, of that red line I was talking about going straight from like only touching it at A. And this might seem confusing at first because, well, it is pretty confusing. How could you get infinitely close? But this is what calculus relies on. It's getting infinitely small or like infinitely close to something and then deducing something from that, even if it doesn't make a lot of sense. So if we go back to our, um, our formula, M, equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. 
we could actually substitute it in for this, 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 and that. So let's call this y2 then. So f of a plus h. So what you're going to want to look at is this thing I'm going to write here. Minus um, a plus h minus a. So this is our final equation, although we can simplify a bit. So we can cut out the a's and we'd be left with h on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that and replace it with just h. And this is the secret thing. This is what it reduces to when you get infinitely close and it becomes a tangent line practically. You'd get this formula where h approaches zero. So how would we write that? How would we put the h gets infinitely close to zero part? Well, let's erase this up top. That's just the visuals. So we'd have, let's see, we'd have lim limit as h approaches zero of f of a plus h minus f of a over h. Now it, just remember this very closely. This part is really just y2 minus y1 over x x2 minus x1. That's all this whole thing is. Where h is some tiny number, so imagine like you have two points and one's a little bit farther and you're doing the, the, the you know, wait, let's call this x2, y2, and then x1, y1. So these are the coordinates. Like these points are infinitely close and you're doing this formula to them and this is what you'll end up with. So let's move that up there. All right, what does the left part mean though, this, this limit as h approaches zero part? Well, this limit sign with, uh, with the kind of directions, I guess. So this means as h approaches zero, what is the value of this, this whole thing? Well, okay, so h is not actually zero because then we'd have something divided by zero, which would be illegal. That would be a math crime. Don't divide by zero. It's totally illegal. So anyway, continuing, h is some value infinitely close to zero. Now it could be, let's say you have a number line here, right? You have zero. Now h could be on this side or on that side. Oh, okay, let me just draw some arrows. So you don't really know which side it's on, but that, that'll only become an issue later. For now, we'll just do some practice on this idea of doing this um, equation. So remember, this is how you find the derivative or the instantaneous rate of change. So let's say our function f of x is equal to x squared. So you know it looks something like that. And let's say we're trying to find the slope at x equals um, maybe 2. So it would be like uh, 2, 4. That would be the point. And let's say we want to look for the equation of the tangent line. So let me draw that in red. So that would be the line of which we're trying to find the slope. So we've got that going. Now let's use our magic formula for limits and derivatives. Just, just I mean like the way to find the derivative using limits. So lim So you can write this in cursive, you can do it in like half cursive. I like to do it like that so it kind of looks clear. So as h approaches 0, we'll write this out first f of let's say a plus h or you can use x plus h doesn't really matter minus f of a over h remember that the h comes from a plus h minus h i mean a plus h minus a which ends up at h so then that would be equal to also remember to always write the limit sign on the left side you might get points deducted for that 
on a test or something. So lem is h approaches zero, and now we put use our function. So so a plus h would be x here. That's why that is inside of the parentheses. So it would be a plus h squared minus a squared because a is alone there, a would be equal to x. So all over h, h is still h. Another equal sign. I guess you could write the equal sign down here. That would also work, but your teacher probably doesn't care. It's the same thing. All right, so limit at h approaches zero, and we can do the do the thing with the a plus b squared in parentheses, that trick. So we'd get a squared plus 2ab, which is 2ah, plus h squared minus a squared. That, that was a bit too, um, OK. So over h. And now you might start to see something strange going on, but let's keep simplifying. Equals lin as b to approach is zero. Oops, all right, approach is zero. And we'd get, let's say, these cancel out. And we'd have 2ah plus h squared over h. Now, something to note here, all of these terms inside of here have h in them. So we can take that out, equals 2a plus h. There's no more h on the bottom, so we'd have this. All right, so what do we do from here? Also, I forgot the limit sign. Don't do that yourself. Um, all right. Well, now we don't have the issue of dividing by 0. So now we can just substitute in 0 because there's no problem with adding 0. That would not be against the law. So we're going to take that out. And we can also take that out. And we'd be left with equals 2a. So what, what do we do with this now? Well, we're going for this, right? x at x, the, the derivative at x equals 2. So we could actually substitute in a for, substitute in 2 for a, and we'd get 4 as our derivative. Also, we can write m here. Up top, that's all equal. So we'd have these are connected to each other. So we'd have 4. That's the slope. m equals 4. All right. So there's the point, And there's our slope. So we use point-slope form. Never use standard form. Don't do like the, the whatever it's called for, for linear equations. Don't use the standard form for linear equations. You can just leave it in point-slope form. Your teacher won't really care. All right. So how do we do that? Well, point slope form is y minus some number, the y value. So I guess it can be like y a or something. No. Let's call it z equals to m, the slope, times x minus the x value here. So I don't know, maybe f. I okay, no, g. All right. G. Um, so that would be our form, point slope form, and we just plug in the values y minus 4, as seen here, equals to 4 times x minus 2. And there we go with our final answer. Of course, you can simplify, but this is the same actual value as the final answer. So you might not want to do that considering you could get it wrong as humans make mistakes all the time. So it would be y minus 4 equals 4 times parentheses x minus 2 and then close the parentheses. All right, so that's how you use limits to find the derivative of a, a tangent line of a function at some given point. So thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Right, one, one more thing. 
you have to add parentheses like let's say you're doing lim x goes what h goes to zero and then you have like multiple terms let's say you've got like a plus b plus c now you need if you want to take the limit at, of all of them then you've got to put these brackets around them so that's just another tip thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time